Hello, everybody. Um, part of Messiah Lutheran Church's mission and purpose is to love our neighbors here in the community, Mechanicsville and beyond. And uh, part of how we can live that mission out is to shine a spotlight on organizations and agencies that are doing good work already. Maybe you don't know about it. So uh, we want our community to get connected to the services that are around and to find ways to help those services as well. So I wanna welcome Beth Clifton from Kindred Hospice. Thank you for being here today. Beth was with us in worship today and told us a little bit about what we do. We wanna get the word out this way too. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. Uh, tell us about Kindred Hospice and your organization and what they do. Kindred Hospice works with patients with life-limiting illnesses um, we send our team in of doctors, nurses, hospice aides, social workers, chaplains, volunteers, and bereavement coordinators after the death to support the family for 13 months after the death. I've said at many a memorial service to the family, everything's going to get quiet after that, after everybody goes home and things settle down. That really means a lot that you stick with the family. Uh, how does Kindred Hospice serve the community? What, so it's in people's homes, I understand. Wherever the, the patient is, it might be a private residence, it might be assisted living facility or a skilled nursing facility. So the team will then go in and work with the patient and the family where they are. What is the benefit not just for the families, but how does that ripple out to the I think when patients have a life-limiting illness and have decided not to receive any more curative care, it can make that process, that journey to transition um, actually more comfortable and calming. It reduces hospital visits to try to extend um, life that sometimes might end up becoming more painful ways to extend with hospice it's all about curative care so it's my apologies it's all about comfort care i know what you mean so yeah. providing that comfort um not shortening life um but at the same time not extending it just taking what time they have left in a comfortable accepting manner. I'm sorry. Well, and I just think that that serves the community and the family in the sense that doctors and nurses at hospitals where those hospital stays and visits might take place might not have that sense of failure that sure. they haven't been able to cure that patient who continues to keep coming back. Um, gives the family sort of a peace of mind um, I think it certainly benefits the patient. That peace of mind, I've, I've worked with patients and parishioners in hospice care before, and I think the peace that comes from the hospice environment process of care definitely ripples out to the whole community. What, what is your role, Kendra? I'm the volunteer coordinator. So with one of those disciplines that we offer families, volunteers go in and help provide, it might be a little bit of respite for the caregiver, giving them an opportunity to go out and run errands or go to a movie, do something for themselves while the volunteer is with the patient. Um, and it could be, that patient might be anywhere on their prognosis. So it could be that they're having very active conversations, playing board games and cards and such to someone where they are sitting with them holding their hand while they're in bed. And it's giving that caregiver that peace of mind that they haven't left their loved one home alone, that someone is there with them. What What are you looking for in your volunteers? What do they need to know or do? Training is provided, um, but just someone who's compassionate, who wants to be with people, um, has a little bit of experience with end of life. Um, and can be that supportive person to the families as well as to the patient. Uh, what kind of time can you go to volunteer? Everything is worked case by case, but we typically like to ask just right off the bat for a year commitment and then a one to two hour a week. 
So the visits happening on a weekly basis. So the family knows that they have someone that they can count on to come in and visit. And the volunteer is developing a little bit of a rapport with the family, having that regular. Now, we talked a little bit before we started recording. I can tell how much love and passion you have for the work that you do. Um, why, why do you feel the way you do about what? It's a little too hard for me. Sure. Um, my passion is volunteerism. So I've actually worked in many nonprofits and for profits around volunteer management. That's just really important to me that people get out there and volunteer. So get out. <laughs> um, but then hospice, I've worked for several different hospices and just have a, a passion and a respect for working with end of life. And I do feel like volunteers who, it, it's one of those things where all volunteers are very important, yeah. but those who work with end of life are almost like extra special volunteers yes. um, because it does take a special person to be a part of this journey. So if people want to support Kindred, whether as a volunteer or any other way, uh, where should they go to get more information? The website, okay. uh, kindredhospice.com. If I can figure out how to do it, we'll have that on the screen or at least post it in the comments. And the phone number, which I don't remember any phone numbers anymore, right. so that's why I had to get the card. Yep. Um, our local business office is 804-290-4300. That's where I could be first. Okay, so you've got a phone number, you've got a website, I'll take that card from you and we'll put them in the comments. Thank you very much. And uh, and for those at home, this will be on our Facebook page, on our website. If this isn't your cup of tea, but maybe you think somebody else's, it could be, please take this post that will this video will be attached to, uh, like it, share it, help us pass it on to your uh, friends in the community and your network here so we can get the, the word spread about the work you're doing and uh, get the volunteers that you need. You, you have a bit of a need right now, if I remember. In this area, we have uh, 15 patients living in the surrounding area of Mechanicsville, just looking for volunteers who live in this area so that folks aren't having to travel distances for their visits, so you can spend more time on the actual visit. One thing, as you were talking, it, it kind of triggered in me that I can't believe I haven't said anything about, sure. um, but our We Honor Veterans. We are part of the We Honor Veterans program um, put on by National. And part of what we do related to that is honor salutes okay. for our veteran patients. So those who have served our country going in with military personnel and dress uniform, providing uh, different items that we prepare to present to the patient. And we do that now while they're still living. So it's different than military rights that happen at their service once they pass. But having volunteers involved in that having veterans volunteer so that we can match veteran patients with yes. veteran volunteers and have that camaraderie. So very big part of what I do that I also love is the, the veterans. I really appreciate that. Anything else you want folks to know? I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Well, well, we'll stop there then. Thanks for watching at home. Thank you so much for coming here today and agreeing to do this little video interview. Um, Beth Clifton from Kindred Hospice, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right.